you so much, uh, Alicia. Really appreciate that. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Yang Hua. I'm very glad to be the moderator for today. And uh, I would like to uh, let the panel have a brief intro of themselves, uh, starting with Patrick, uh, just uh, uh, of uh, what, what have you done in terms of a, a digital transformation journey so far. Uh, so over to Patrick. Hi, everybody. Um, hope you can hear me well. So uh, again, my name is Patrick, and I'm uh, currently working in Huawei. For myself, I have about you know, 15 years of uh, working experience. Most of my years are you know, uh, with doing enterprise uh, type of uh, role. All right. um, currently, I'm uh, you know, uh, basically moved into vertical uh, business uh, you know, um, uh, type of uh, you know, expert role. But I, I guess you know, um, the enterprise is very much in my uh, blood. And I'm definitely glad to be here to be talking to you guys. Thank you, Tawa. Okay, thanks, uh, Mohammad. Uh, hi, everybody. First of all, uh, very glad to be here. Uh, this is Mohammed. I'm uh, currently serving uh, at Petronas Digital as uh, uh, head of business, uh, head of uh, enterprise architect, focusing on application. Um, and uh, in long time, I'm uh, carrying the architect uh, title or job, um, either officially or mostly by practice, uh, more than 15 years, about 20 years. And uh, I'm very excited to be here. Great. Okay, lastly, uh, Brian. Thanks, Yonghua. Um, hope you can hear me well. And a very good afternoon to uh, all the guests and folks uh, on the call. Uh, again, it's my, my pleasure and privilege to be here. Um, so I myself, I've been about 20 plus years in industry and uh, up to 15 years uh, with the financial services. So while I, like what Xiangwei mentioned, I'm currently heading the, the architecture team in Bank of Singapore. And Bank of Singapore is a wholly subsidiary private banking arm of OCBC Bank. And we are based in Singapore. And uh, Bank of Singapore, we are Asia Global Private Bank uh, based in seven markets. And um, you know, uh, my past experience includes not just architecture. Uh, I've done architecture almost for more than 10 years from all the way from solution, tech, enterprise. Um, but in my last few years, I also did a, a bit of a chief data role uh, in one of the global insurance companies. So it's an interesting mix between architecture and data. I can share a little bit more later. Uh, but yeah, back to you, uh, Xianghua. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, so today's uh, session is on developing a winning digital transformation strategy. And uh, the audience would... Uh, very much like to understand uh, how has your digital transformation journey so far and uh, uh, how, how do you, some of the tips and uh, learnings uh, that you have done um, so far. So maybe we start off with Patrick. Sure. So um, thank you uh, for you know, the question. Um, first and foremost, I would say, you know, from digital transformation perspective, um, our you know um company itself, Huawei, you know, have uh, basically uh you know um, embarked on this uh, journey to transform digitally. And along uh you know our experience here, well, what is uh, basically you know the important learning here is that um digital transformation has to be you know something that uh, really helps um the users, all right, of the uh, uh, IT per se, right? So um we are not just talking about you know um adding more system uh, to the uh, process so that you know you you have more things to do but uh some or how rather it has to be user centric or uh, bring a uh, capability that will help uh you know the um entire business process to become more efficient uh, to become better at uh, you know um a, a lot of uh, this uh, you know um um business uh, uh dealings right so i i will probably want to quote a very simple example uh, on our, you know, um, uh, basically uh, um, experience. So I've been consulting and I have, uh, you know, visited one of the Africa um, company, right, or, or rather a government uh, uh, facility. So what they are actually talking to me about is that they want to uh, adopt the, uh, things like artificial intelligence. It's a hype, right? So everybody wants to talk about artificial intelligence. But when I really look at um, what they are doing, uh, in their you know uh, their business processes, they are still doing a lot of manual recording. So when there is a case that comes in, they are actually you know um writing down the request you know in the in the in the notepad, all right, and then uh, you know have somebody type it into the computer. So my you know um experience here tells me that you know for you to achieve 
uh, this uh, business uh, kind of like transformation, right? Uh, it is not uh, a thing for you to adopt the latest and the greatest, but you have to really go through, right? Uh, the process of first digitizing, uh, as in, you know, changing those manual forms into an electronic form. And then you go into digitalization, which is about, you know, um, basically using uh, electronics form, like for example, a web uh, browser, a website for uh, people to uh, be able to access to your uh, this, uh, you know, um, um, business or your processes easier or your service much easier. And finally, can, you can talk about digital transformation, which are uh, involve a change of the whole, you know, um, way of doing businesses so that it becomes uh, much better. And a lot of digital transformation make use of data to improve processes. And I believe that is also one of the very important um, aspect. So that is my um, simple journey uh, through uh, you know the digital transformation, which I hope to share with you guys. Okay, great. And uh, Brian, uh, you want to add? Oh, that, that's an amazing response, uh, Patrick. I really like what he said. It's really about simplification, right? Uh, today, um, you know, today we are faced with the growth of digital channels. You know, we are faced with new business models. We are faced with fast growth, you know, especially in the financial, financial services where customers want their data, their portfolio, their cash balance on their mobile screens near real time, right? Um, and with AI, like what uh, Patrick has mentioned, I think the growth of these new uh, emerging technologies and trends have got everyone excited. And I do agree with Patrick, it's really not about the best technologies out there, but it's really what relevant, right? I think that, that's where we are at as well. Uh, while we are actually um, uh, over the years, you know, we are 12 year old uh, private banking, I'm part of OCBC, right? Um, you know, we do have some legacy as well. So as we're on a journey of like basically modernizing as well. Right, always um, putting the customers at the heart of our uh, what we do. I think what's important it's really um, you know uh, listening to the customers, especially during COVID. Right, um, we all know we were all locked down. Everything was forced to be digitally transformed. Right, which which in a way you know uh, that that caused us to increase the velocity by you know thirty to forty percent. You know, we're releasing much more than often. And uh, what I really see is that uh, architects, um, you know, like all of us in this room today, right? Uh, like what Paul said, you know, um, you know value creation and not just being um, at the, not just called enterprise, but being at the different value streams, right? Being in a different domain, being at where all the action happens, right? I think what key things that the architects really, really call out is the vision, right? The North Star, right? Guys, where we're all moving towards and always constantly reminding them um, not to forget the target architecture, right? Not to look for the best technologies, but where is relevant? Example, does this really help our customers? You know, what are the trade-offs, right? The constant discussions, which of course alludes to a lot of, uh, which later I think we talk about challenges, right? A lot of like uh, healthy debates, like what Paul calls it between, you know, the various tech guys and the architects and all that's the frequency of that more and more has happened. It's, I guess it's all that putting all together in a mesh of digital transformation, right? And really architects value adding to each of these streams and being part of the deliverables and to showcase really, really where it matters. To, I think to us, for example, in Bank of Singapore and OCBC, we are really focused on architecture because we believe, you know, the plans that we have in 2023, 2025, or even 2030, right, uh, is significantly coming to pass. And how we how we really translate that into a visible language and understanding for our users, our stakeholders to understand and take home and see the value of where we are moving towards. I think that really excites everyone in this digital transformation journey. Is it challenging? Yes, it is. Uh, is there a lot of like heartbreaks and tough journeys? Yes, it is as well. But it is a very fun and um, you know exciting journey to be in today for all of us. Yeah. Okay, great. So it's very inspiring to hear that the enterprise architecture practice uh, has been uh, essential in your digital transformation journey. So uh, what advice would you give to companies that have yet to establish a EA function but are expiring to do digital transformation? Uh, Mohammad, uh, maybe you want to share that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think uh, allow me to get back and to the previous question. There were uh, really nice insights from what Brian and Patrick mentioned. Uh, I like to mention that oh, we got to distinguish between digitalization, uh, modernization, and also transformation. In Petronas Digital, our CDO says we must stay ahead. And that's not just a slogan. Uh, it has a meaning to that. Uh, staying ahead is a big part of transformation maturity, I would say. It is the time that 
transformation and digital is in your DNA already. You are pretty established and uh, your business model is aligned with the digital world. So, uh, and, and it keeps uh, going on because uh, it's, uh, to me, it's a never ending activity and we, we have to improve. And getting back to your question, what is the relation between these two and what an EA can help um, as a function uh, to the organization? I would say it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, IT is from Mars and business is from Venice, right? Uh, enterprise architects are here to glue these two different functions together and help CIOs to make meaningful and uh, conscious decisions. Uh, uh, most frequently, it's being mistaken that enterprise architects are making decisions for enterprise. I would argue that, and I would say our job is to provide the best option possible uh, for the business and uh, to, to balance between technology and the business interest in the organization. So I would say uh, one of the, the key success factors, at least in Petronas that I see, is the setup of the EA function which is very close to management and uh, that will maximize the value of enterprise architect in my vision. Okay, great. Well, what about Patrick, uh, if for companies that do not have any EAs, uh, how would you recommend or advise them? Um, I think, you know, this uh, uh, EA practice itself is uh, becoming such uh, crucial, you know, um, uh, thing that a company has to basically put in place that it brings us into um, this, uh, you know, um, situation where uh, if you don't have uh, this kind of practice put in place, all right, um, what is going to have happen is it will be in chaos, all right. So I, I look at, you know, a lot of uh, companies have a lot of companies out there to basically, uh, you know, consult them. Um, a lot of time, you know, if you are, you know, doing things in an ad hoc manner, so what you are basically doing is you are going to throw solution or, you know, um, device, all right, or I, will, I, don't, I don't mean device, I mean, uh, you know, uh, 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 a solution that uh, basically do certain things. You're going to throw all this uh, disparate uh, technology in a uh, business itself. They are not going to basically work in a uh, good uh, harmony, right? So a lot mm. of time you can create a lot more uh, vulnerabilities uh, without uh, basically uh, doing the planning in the first place. So my advice to them is uh, really think through about, you know, um, what you are investing, uh, what you are going to invest in. It's the best to you have uh, end goal, like uh, what uh, Brian called the North Star in place before you can uh, actually, uh, you know, um, uh, take your journey towards that goal. If not, you're right, I, I will have, uh, you know, um, tell you that, you know, you will eventually have to deal with the mess of uh, chaos that yeah, you put in place. Right? Yeah, agree. Certainly agree with that. And um, thanks, uh, Mohammed, for distinguishing uh, digitalization, modernization, as well as transformation. I think in various degrees, uh, the different companies are trying to uh, have a structured way to translate business uh, uh, success. Uh, and uh, IT is a very major part of it. And we are trying to um, translate that into really a good business outcome. And through that process, uh, different people are using uh, enterprise architecture skills differently. Uh, whether formally or informally. So uh, it's good that uh, we, we keep that in mind and uh, make sure that we grow in a very uh, sustained fashion, right? So thank, thanks a lot for that uh, context uh, on the uh, EA help in the digital transformation journey. So um, one of the challenges of digital transformation is multiple initiatives that require time to analyze and prioritize. So what are some of the techniques you can do to balance the organization needs? Um, Brian, you may want to start off. Thanks, Yongba. I think we get that challenge a lot because um, we are organized in squads and tribes and, you know, these are your like verticals, right? And we talk about, you know, Paul talks about value creation, value delivery streams a bit earlier and how we should be plugged inside. I think that's the, that's the key part that uh, resonates uh, with us a lot because I think what we see is that um, there'll be multiple um, demands that's crashing from different 
horizontals or different verticals and even horizontal. So we're sitting EA both in the verticals and in the horizontal. And I mean verticals is basically, um, I, I do have a point of view in terms of, um, you know, uh, people always think EA is governance, right? Um, actually, EA does more than that. EA is really creating value. It's solutioning up at the forefront. It's providing like what are the North Star we talked about a bit earlier, but not just that, but, you know, it's not just like pointing, let's go there and let's all go there together, but it's really how to get there, right? That, that, that blueprint that, and the roadmap that shows the North Star, the target the architecture in one or two years time or even six months time, that is, and also the transition, you know, the, the work on how do we get that, hand holding them on how to get that, being part at the forefront of the core teams, right? So that they, they, they you know, they as in the, the business and the tech teams, the engineers, the solution leads, they engage us, not at the end, just for review, but in the beginning and say, hey, let's, I want to build a mobile app. Uh, what do we have today, right? How do we get there? At, at, the, at the forefront of building that solution. I think that's important, that mindset we want to educate, you know, not just a senior manager. I really agree with Mama, you know, in terms of being close to senior management, that they need to see that as well at the ground level, the value that we bring. And I think, and I think back to quantifying the, the this value, right? The value creation, right, is being able to showcase the benefits as well. Right. So me and my team, what we do is for the architectural changes, right? Moving from governance, right? The work that we do, what are the improvements that we are making? We're doing systematic reviews on system A, B, C, right? We're doing architectural target architectures to showcase each of these areas. How much benefit is it bringing? Right. So we we help we help the business even and help the teams to quantify, hey, you know, this amount of architecture change by going on real near real time data, it will give our customers this amount of information, right? Um, and what does that mean to the customer? Right, increase in MPS. Can he actually um, trade more products or buy more products, do more cross-selling, things like that? And that comes up to revenue increase potentially. Okay, how can we use architecture to improve, right? Uh, efficiency, right? Man hour safe and all. So if this is a language that architects uh, like us start talking, right? You know that quantification of that value, right, is being seen and felt at every single level of the organization. You know, and and, and in order to be that, it's really being really close uh, to where all the action is. Right, um, you know, jokingly, seven, ten years ago, we always tell me architecture team sits in an ivory tower, right? I really don't like that. I really said, no, 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 we should sit at the ground level, right? Uh, be the first, you know, to be engaged whenever a solution lead asks for something. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, back to you, Sankwa. Yeah, that's great. And uh, Patrick, you want to add anything to? Sure. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, uh, that question. I think uh, I I will add. You know, the 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 fact that you know uh, for. Uh, a lot of uh, this kind of uh, you know architecture planning, all right. Um, the how you study is very important. So I always advocate that you know when you are talking about a business, uh, you know, um, projects and improvement projects per se, you should look at your value stream, right? Um, in terms of uh, what are the activities that will add value, right, to you, right? So that. Uh, itself, if you have them sorted up, you will know what are the things that are basically additive to uh, your uh, efficiency and productivity, and what are the things that are you know um, basically uh, not that important. Sometimes they are they are, they are you know uh, put into place uh, to basically have additional uh, check and balance. All right. So we, if you face with a situation that you do not have enough resources, the decisions like that are very important. To understand right of uh, what 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 are the IT activities that add value to you, and that will come from you know your analysis of the whole value stream of IT in the business, right? So I think uh, my job today uh, in the industry uh, but, uh, vertical view is to basically provide that business architecture for organizations so that you know um you do things that has the maximum value rather than you know you just blindly jump into all the projects that is initiated by. You know different businesses, so I I I, I will add that to mm. the answer. Yeah, great. And Muhammad, uh, you have anything to add? If one, um, yeah, sure. I think uh, it's pretty uh, well covered here. Um, okay. I, I just want to be uh, a, a little bit more blunt here and say how EA mm. as a function can uh, really manage those all initiatives, all those silo works, and etc in a digital transformation context. I, I, I'm really a fan of the idea to burn the boat. So uh, we know that transformation is not an easy thing. It's not a simple or tiny thing. And statistically based on economists, uh, um, uh, like numbers, more than 70% of a digital transformation in all organizations takes. 
So uh, literally, we are um, shaking even the most confident CEOs in each organization about uh, transformation, how we can uh, change the engine of an airplane when it is flying, right? Tra digital transformation for organization, especially big ones like Imagine Petronas is like that. So you have to keep the lights on, you have to serve your customer or uh, um, like uh, partners. And at the same time, uh, have your revenue um, or in the same track, you got to keep uh, moving on and transform everything into the digital way of doing that. I would say uh, as a stage in the transformation, you have to cut off and say, hey, there is no way back from here. And from now on, we practice this um, um, a digital way of working, which it can be in terms of value chain, as Patrick mentioned, it can be uh, the, the way that we are controlling our customer behavior, as uh, Brian said, I would say the way that we treat our people, uh, uh, train or uh, uh, upskill them for uh, the new task that they are going to be there. Um, that would be all something that uh, I, I would say EA function has a say and uh, impact on that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm not a fan of categorizing the EA in different like business uh, uh, infra, blah, blah, blah. But um, I, I like to say that we are influencer in the organization in that journey. Mm, excellent. So uh, one of the uh, key learnings I also uh, um, did uh, last time uh, when I was uh, facing with a barrage of different demands is that I have to weigh between uh, the value, the, the business value versus the uh, effort of uh, doing things. So from there, we can uh, map out which one has a bigger value uh, and time and effort to do it if it is shorter. Uh, you know, us usually we want to get the low hanging fruits going so as to build up that, that kind of momentum and the, the speed of execution and also the kind of um, early celebration so that people can understand, you know, the value of EA, value of uh, uh, transformation so that uh, they, they get more confident and then they move on to further uh, and bigger things. So this is uh, one of the learning I had as well um, in, in my digital transformation journey. So uh, going forward, um, what are some of the digital transformation initiatives that uh, your company will be focusing on in the next two years given the, you know, your learnings in the past and, and how you want to go forward. Can you share with us uh, some of them? Uh, maybe starting with Patrick. Thank you for the question. Um, I think going forward itself, um, I think we have been really, you know, thinking uh, about some of uh, this uh, uh, aspect of it. And I, I personally, you know, want to put my cards on to uh, you no know, going to, you know, something we call uh, cloudification, all right? So I, I know cloud technology is not something new, all right? But I, the way that we look at um, cloud computing is not a end by itself, all right? We, we see cloud computing as a means to an end, the end being to have data, uh, you know, um, uh, in the same place, all right? So once you put them in the cloud, you know, you can actually uh, run uh, your query across uh, because they are all in the same you know, uh, uh, um, system uh, in the cloud, right? So so. Yeah. The cloudification then becomes something that we are pushing. So today I will not say that you know we are you know are not cloud uh, you know ready. Uh, in fact, in Huawei itself, uh, uh, more than eighty five percent of our applications are already in the cloud. All right. So it's that twenty five percent that has a lot of uh, resistance uh, and difficult to transform. But I think we are going to basically now uh, put in this uh, you know um, process to make sure that we get towards. Uh, you know, full cloudification, all right, or within the next uh, one to two years. Um, yeah, so maybe some people may think that, oh, this is something so simple, right? But I guess, uh, you know, um, for us to make that decision, we have to have a strong case. And our case is that we're going to use cloud as a mean to get uh, data, uh, you know, um, unification, right? Yeah, yeah, cloud journey has never been uh, that smooth sailing and uh, it's not <laughs> never easy as well, but it's a necessary uh, path, right? So yeah, glad to hear that. And uh, what about uh, Brian? Oh, I, yeah. 
I can't agree more with Patrick. It's, it's never easy. And in fact, the journey is getting tougher and tougher, right? Um, and um, how we look at it is from, for us is definitely, um, see, we are always changing and, you know, like um, new things always keep happening every year. What, what is relevant one year ago may not be relevant now. Um, for us, we definitely look at it from three aspects, right? Um, from a transformation space is the platform, people, and process. Um, process is definitely in terms of simplification, right? So people do not see architecture as, uh, a long many step process governance, but in fact, it can be simplified. It can be embedded mm. within their teams and squads, right? And for people to, to really have that uh, ongoing uh, architecture mindset, because we believe architecture is not just sitting within the architecture team, but it's really everyone holds an architecture mindset. When, when you have an architecture mindset, you always mm. have a, a target architecture in mind, where you're building towards that North Star, how are you bringing to it, and how you can quantify that value that architecture brings, right? Uh, and that should, our, when we, a winning strategy is really when your whole organization uh, runs with the same mindset um, as us, right? And definitely for, for platform wise, um, it's always ever growing. And uh, the goal there is that uh, as we are still making our platform more customer centric, uh, more data driven for um, uh, you know, customers, in fact, we call our own employees, our customers as well, um, our partners, our customers, all of all these customer 360 needs to be really something that's simple to use, like what Patrick has called out, right? Uh, we're still far from there. And, uh, you know, all these, you know, the platforms and all, whether it be cloud or non-cloud, right? We really want to make it as, and enable the business to be as agile as possible so that when they think of a new product, a new asset class or a new financial service, they want to launch an offer, we can say it won't take six months. It'll take you one month, for example. That's where um, we're really embarking on in the next uh, one, one year, three years, and five years. Yeah. Wow, that is really inspiring. <laughs> okay, that's good. And uh, Mohammad, uh, yeah, sure. would you like to share? Yeah. Um, so, I again, uh, I like to reiterate what uh, I just started in the early this session that transformation has multiple stages. It starts yes. with um, like a simple visualization. Uh, mm. Then it will go to the business unit level. They are um, trying to do their automation using AI, etc. But the business model is the same. Uh, the third stage possibly is where the every individual business uh, businesses uh, business units or organization under enterprise. Uh, we'll figure out their own new business model, which is completely transformed and uh, it's based on the digital values. Uh, but still, they are not in synchronization with the higher level strategies of an enterprise. Uh, from there, we would say partially sync up. And the, the next stage would be probably where they are going to sync up all those business models uh, uh, aligned with the higher level strategy in the enterprise level, possibly with the CEO or president. So from there, again, we are getting back to the uh, staying ahead that we need to uh, keep reinventing our business. We need to uh, keep restructuring the organization in a way that we, uh, we always have the digital DNA Then we can call ourselves as an organization which is transformed. Uh, I said all of that to, uh, to say uh, probably, uh, yes, we know that cloud is, is uh, there is not easy. It, it should be something should be done sooner or later, uh, or some organization on doing uh, uh, reversing that by any reason. So I don't want to go there. Uh, but to me, what is excites me that uh, where I'm working and the organization that I'm serving is uh, a bit beyond that, and we are thinking about the sustainability. Uh, which I think it should be everybody's concern because uh, digital will help a lot in this uh, area to reach to the goal of uh, having a net zero carbon uh, very soon. So, and it's not only a climate change, it's not only uh, the emissions, it's about the data centers that you are working with, the cloud providers that you are working and doing the transformation with. Mm. So uh, how environment friendly they are how much uh, or if where in their journey they are standing in terms of transformation too. Uh, I would say uh, probably my focus in next couple of years uh, would be uh, looking into the sustainability from an architect uh, architecture approach first and also uh, leveraging IT to achieve that high level goal, which is uh, I think everybody's concern these days. Excellent. 
Okay, I, I think sustainability is really a very key, uh, you know, theme now, nowadays, uh, given the, um, you know, em environmental issues that we are facing everywhere. So thank you uh, for that. And uh, good that Petronas is uh, leading the way in that sense. Okay, good. Uh, I think we have about uh, eight minutes for a Q and A uh, session. So uh, I would like to open the floor to for any questions. I haven't seen any question at the chat. Uh, so do put in your questions if you have. Okay, everyone is a bit shy. Uh, I do have a backup question, okay, for the panel. So as the company's the digital ambitions grow, how can we manage the pace of digital transformation while ensuring enough EA representation? Uh, anyone would like to answer that? I possibly start, and I think I'm, I'm very keen to hear what Brian and Patrick have to say about that. So <laughs> to me, uh, uh, to me it, it will uh, break into uh, three different areas, which is company itself, consumer, and also competitors. So uh, we have to look into this area if we want to make sure that we keep the momentum and the pace. So when we talk about consumer, how we can change the expectation and behavior of the consumers, right? We can't say we have uh, online banking while our consumers still prefer go to ATM, right? Or uh, refer to the branch. So how we are going to do that, this should be another thread of work on going to transform their, that behavior. Uh, for the competitors, I mean, the borders of the um like focus area of each business is getting more blurred this day it's like fading out and some competitors are uh, good partners these days so we gotta continuously observe them and see where we can get help from others we can learn from them and uh so they can help to us to accelerate and ultimately to the uh, our company as i mentioned earlier uh, how to skill up how to optimize our organization structure and how to build new capabilities uh, that uh, really help uh, our uh, speed in terms of transformation. That, that's uh, my generic view on that. Okay. Does anyone want to add to that? Uh, maybe yes. I, can, I, will, I will chime in just very quickly. Okay. Uh, just sure. to add on, I think I think uh, Mama really, really, really painted out very clearly. Um, I think really being that trusted advisor of the business leaders uh, that spearheading the digital transformation, right? Um, because we all have a common goal, right? We want to help the company to grow uh, and in various ways and meet our business goals. And that's where the part whereby sometimes business get too excited and you know they want to do this, they want to do that. Mm. How do we then, um, as EAs, right, um, using our toolkits, right, business architecture, for example, like what Patrick uh, mentioned, right, lay a framework as guiding principles even to help them structure their thoughts and that will help them to frame up you know their what the goals and the different lanes right hopefully that will help to ease up the pace in one in one realm and of course the second part it's really um managing trade-offs right taking a risk-based approach to see what really can go first what will be a tech depth and how can we position that later i think that's something that we're all doing already yeah back to you mm. Okay, yeah. good. So I guess this is uh, down to me. So um, as a uh, you know, uh, last uh, person to kind of like uh, comment on this, mm -hmm. um, what I would like to basically um, say is that, you know, um, what is uh, really important uh, here is uh, actually not uh, about doing more things. I think uh, more importantly, uh, it is about, you know, um, ability to manage. So I, I will uh, definitely be looking at, uh, look, um, you know, what, what we have today in our portfolio. All right, and then trying to plan for uh, you no know, new project that can replace all right some of this uh change ticket that may be coming because of this uh legacy system uh mm. you know is in place and then generating some uh kind of like a health ticket. So if I can mm. find that uh you know um solution to reduce the workload to make mm. things simpler, I think that uh is definitely something that will add value to the whole organization. Okay. There is uh, one question from the floor. Uh, what are the challenges in adopting latest technology? Thank you. 
Who would like to take it? What are the challenges in adopting latest technology? Um, so I would answer uh, this with a question. Why do you want to adopt the latest technology? Why yeah. not we start from business capability? Yeah. Exactly, yes. Well, so the main key is to ask the right question, begin with the right uh, question, so that you know uh, where you can what you can do the, because uh, technology is just a uh, the north star is still important so yeah and the other question is i want to become a main player in driving digital transformation in a company how to do i get there i can attempt a bit on this uh i i would say actually digital transformation is a team sport uh it is not a person driving just uh, uh, driving it alone uh, because uh, you can never get there uh, frankly speaking if you are doing it alone so um, um, yeah anyone else yeah I can just give a, a very friendly advice here uh, don't go to any transformation that the higher management higher our uh, top leadership they don't put their skin in it uh, yeah that's kind of a victim of failure. So uh, yeah. transformation required a lot of uh, authority. So I would say uh, it should be organically given to you in an organization, uh, whatever is the right way of that uh, to do in your organization. So I wouldn't say this is something uh, that uh, may individually go ahead. I, I agree with you. Mm. Yes. True. Uh, there's one question on how do we become a digital transformation architect from a solution and technology architect? I think uh, for this particular question is um, actually there's no such uh, function called digital transformation architect uh, because as you can hear from the previous uh, uh, speaker um, he has shared that actually architect is a broad term and it encompasses you know five major areas information software solution uh, infrastructure um, and uh, and um, business architect so with that um, all these uh, you know, roles acting together, then digital transformation happens. So there's no particular role called digital transformation architect. Okay, good. Uh, I think uh, there is no more questions actually. And, uh, and I do uh, appreciate you know, all the active participation from the audience. And uh, I think uh, it's time for us to wrap up. And uh, with that, I, I would like to ask uh, each speaker uh, to give uh, one single advice that you uh, can give to the audience uh, to take away from our session today. You know, if you can give one advice for the audiences, what would that be? Starting with Patrick. <laughs> Um, sure, I think uh, you know the one key basically uh, advice that I want to give to everybody is to really focus on uh, you know um, um, adding value to business right rather than uh, you know um, um, just doing things because they are hard or they are the latest. Yeah, that's it. I guess. Thank you, Muhammad. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, that was a really good advice. Uh, start from business, start from business capability always. Um, define the pro problem statement really cle uh, clearly. And if you can provide solution for each uh, uh, specific problem, uh, congratulations, you're a strategist. So uh, you will have a good journey in the transformation. Okay, great. And uh, Brian? I kind of agree more with uh, Patrick and Mohamed. Um, you know, I think we heard a lot about value creation also already. Uh, I won't reiterate that anymore. But I think uh, what really drives value creation, it's 
really one one ingredient that all of us um, you know uh, are really doing and we can we can do it more enough is really collaboration we find that um, you know we talk about healthy debates happening more and more because of transformation and the velocity of work coming in you know that that hard to collaborate sometimes you know when you just go out for coffee with your stakeholder you know be it a senior stakeholder or even an engineer or tech lead to discuss the problem statement and how we are solving the problem together as an architect and share very open views right like open architecture with open views also right um, you, you'll find that that, has, that will really, you know, sort a lot of things and help you solve the problem. Because I realize sometimes when we, this whole digital transformation, we go through Teams, Zoom, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of like no face-to-face -face interaction sometimes. I know it's difficult uh, because someone is in lockdown, but really even for that, that physical presence or that, or that Zoom, that maybe that Zoom session, that one-to-one -one collaboration to really hear the person out, I think that really helps a lot as architects, listening intense, in, intensively to find out where the root of the things is. Because sometimes, it all takes for us to really just, you know, hey, how come this is like that? And ask the question, ask the right questions, and then come to get the solution together. And I agree with someone, it's a team spot together. And you really, architects will really derive joy in solving the problem together. Yep. Yeah, excellent. That's great. That's a great wrap uh, to the, our session today. Uh, so uh, I, I hope you have uh, gathered quite a few good uh, tips uh, from the session. And uh, with that, I would like to hand the floor back to uh, Alicia. Hi, thank you, uh, Xianghua and all the digital transformation leader in the panels for insightful uh, sharing.